Hey guys, nothing new in this one, just harder versions of things that we've seen before. So we are looking at solving linear simultaneous equations. So when we're given two equations and they're both linear and we're asked to solve them. Now, uh, obviously we're going to be looking at harder versions of these because we're now at A level. So at GCSE we often get ideal answers where we always get whole numbers, positive numbers, etc. It's not always the case, so here we're going to get slightly more tricky answers. In the next video we will be looking at uh, linear and quadratic simultaneous equations, but that's a story deserving of its own video. So, if you want any more examples of these, I've got loads of videos on simultaneous equations. In this as well, we're also going to be looking at what's going on graphically. So something that really needs to be drilled into your uh, brains now is that when we are solving linear simultaneous equations, we are finding the point of intersection of two straight lines. So this is going to come into play a lot in the next chapter, which is coordinate geometry. So we're going to be seeing simultaneous equations a lot in there. So again, when we're solving these guys, we are finding the points, or well, sorry, the point straight lines only ever meet at one place, if they meet. So we are finding the point, the coordinates of the point of intersection of two straight lines. When don't they meet? If they're parallel. So, let's get cracking. Okay, first example then, 4x at 3y equals minus 4, 6x minus 4y is equal to 11. So, both of these are equations of straight lines. They might not look in the uh, form that we're used to, y equals mx plus c, but both of them can be arranged to look uh, like that. But we don't want to bother doing that. So we know that they are linear because there's no square powers or cube powers or anything. We've got single powers of x, single powers of y. So the very first thing I would recommend doing is labelling the equations 1 and 2. This just makes it easier to explain what we are doing with each equation as we work through. So, the aim of the game here is to use elimination. Now elimination means to eliminate one of the variables, so either x or y, so that we are then left with an equation in terms of just one of them, which we can then solve, find the value of that variable, and substitute that back into one of these two equations to find the value of the other variable. Now, to be able to do this, we need to have the same amount of the same variable in both equations, which we don't at the moment. So in equation 1 we got 4x, in 2 we have 6x, in 1 we have 3y, in 2 we have minus 4y. So, we need to do a bit of jiggery pokery first of all. Now, I'm going to alter these guys so that we have the same quantity of x in both equations. I could just as easily go for y, I'm just choosing to go for x. So, what's the first uh, thing that 4 and 6 go into? It's 12. So, we're going to multiply both equations separately so that we end up with 12x. So, to turn 4 into 12, we need to multiply equation 1 by 3. Now, it's very important you do this to every single term. So, we're going to get 12x plus 9y. And you have to do it on the right too. Uh, so, 3 times minus 4 is minus 12. Now we're going to call that guy equation 
3 really it is exactly the same as equation 1 but it looks different so I'm giving it a different name okay I'm going to turn 6 into 12 we're going to need to multiply equation 2 by 2 so 2 times 6x is 12x uh, 2 times minus 4y is going to give us minus 8y 2 times 11 is 22 now we're going to call that equation 4 so now we're in quite a happy position equations 3 and 4 both have a positive 12x so we can now eliminate the x uh, by subtracting now it doesn't matter which way around we do it we could do equation 4 take away equation 3 or equation 3 take away equation 4 whichever way around we do it we're going to end up with negatives I'm going to do it so that I end up with a positive y term so I'm going to do equation 3 minus equation 4 now 12x take away 12x cancels out that was the whole point of the uh, jiggering pokery 9y minus minus 8y gives us positive 17y and then on the right minus 12 minus 22 is going to give us minus 34 so there is our equation in terms of just one variable we can now solve that for y so if we divide by 17 we get y is minus 2 so that is half of our answer we now have the y coordinate where these two lines meet now what we need to do is find the x coordinate now we do that by substituting in our y value so it doesn't matter at all which equation we go for I'm going to go for equation 2 uh, so equation 2 tells us 6x minus 4y is equal to 11 but we know that y is equal to minus 2 so minus 4 times minus 2 is positive 8 so we know that 6x plus 8 is equal to 11 if we then take away the 8 we get 6x is equal to 3 therefore x is equal to 1 half so our solutions here then are x equals 1 half and y equals minus 2 let's have a look at that on a graph just to make sure so here we've got both of our straight lines plotted uh, now the point that we've just found is this point here so the y coordinate is indeed minus 2 and the x coordinate is indeed one half like that so that is what's going on graphically uh, I hope you followed that one through alright. Let's go through some more. Okay, example 2. So 2x add 16y equals 10. 64y minus 5 add 3x is equal to 0. So, before we start thinking about these simultaneously, there is quite a bit, well, two things that we can do to make life easier. So, always with maths make things simpler if you can before you get cracking 
Shirt two X sixteen Y and ten have a common factor. This common factor is two. So we can write that as X plus eight Y is equal to five. And the second equation, we never want a constant on the same side as x and y. So, we want to move our minus 5. So, we would then get, and uh, also, I would rewrite the order to, so, 3x add 64y is equal to uh, 5, 2. Good times. Okay, so now we're there. Let's start playing simultaneous equations. Okay, so call the top guy one, bottom guy two. Now, we only need to alter one equation here to get the same amount of the same variable, which is equation one. We can turn x into 3x by multiplying by 3. So, that's exactly what we're going to do. 3 times equation 1. We're going to get 3x plus 24y is equal to 15. Uh, so, I'm going to call that Equation 3. Now, I'm going to want to su subtract equation 2 from equation 3, so I'm just going to write it again underneath. So we got 3x uh, add 64y. Actually, change of plan. No, I'm not. I'm going to want to do equation 2. Take away equation 3 purely because I'm then going to end up with a positive uh, y term. So I'm going to do equation 2 minus equation 3. 3x take 3x disappears. 64y minus 24y leaves us with 40y. And that is going to be equal to 5 minus 15, which is minus 10. So, 40y is minus 10. Therefore, uh, 4y is minus 1. Therefore, y is minus one quarter times so that's half our answer now we need to work out the value of x so to do that I'm going to use uh, equation 1 so we know that x add 8y is 5. So, x add 8 times minus 1 quarter is equal to 5. So, x of 8 times minus a quarter is minus 8 quarters, which is minus 2. So, x minus 2 is equal to 5, therefore, x is equal to 7. So, there's our solution to that one. x is 7, y is minus quarter. Let's check out the graph. Okay, so, this is how they would look. If we were to plot them, you can indeed see the x coordinate is here. At x equals 7, and if we went across to the y axis, 
it would be minus quarter. So again, that's what's going on behind the scenes. Okay, quite a mean looking one here to finish up on. So y equals minus three fifths x add one half and y equals nine halves minus x. There, look at all the fractions. However, what do we notice about these? Well, both equations are telling us what y is equal to. So, if y is equal to minus three-fifths x add one-half and y is equal to nine-halves minus x, then that tells us that minus three-fifths x add one-half is equal to nine halves minus x. So what we can actually do straight away here is eliminate y by using a substitution. So what we're going to do is set the x expressions equal to each other. And we can do that again because y is equal to both of them. So they are equal to each other. So uh, minus three-fifths x plus one-half is equal to nine-halves minus x. And now we just need to solve that equation. So I'm gonna, what am I gonna do? Something. I'm gonna, first of all, let's take away this one half. So if we take away one half, we've got minus three fifths x is equal to, well, nine halves minus one half is eight halves, which is four. So that's got rid of two fractions, good times. So we got four minus x. Now what we could do, if you're not confident adding x to minus three fifths x, we could multiply everything through now by five. So we would have minus three x equals 20 minus 5x. Then if we add 5x, we would get 2x is equal to 20. Therefore, x is equal to 10. So, there's our fire answer. x is equal to 10. Now we need to find the value of y. Now, we can use either one of the top two equations. I'm going to go for equation two. Y is nine halves minus X. So, Y is equal to nine halves minus ten. So, Y is equal to nine halves minus twenty halves. Nine halves minus twenty halves gives us y equal to minus eleven halves or minus five point five. Good times. Okay guys, hope you found this one useful. In the next one, we will be looking at simultaneous equations where one is linear and one is quadratic. See you there.